We will never produce a blanc de blanc champagne. That's not our philosophy. Our philosophy is to be Pinot Noir driven. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Uh, well, this will be an interview with, within France. Yeah? Uh, we would like to, to know about your brand and uh, how your brand is perceived in the Asian market. How is performing? Any insights about uh, your job? So, so yeah, I wanted to, to tell you a few things about Bollinger. There are five important things to keep in mind about Bollinger. The first thing is about the the over vineyards. So we have big vineyards that account today for about 50% of our needs. You know, in Champagne, most of the houses they have very few vineyards. They don't, some of them they even don't have any vineyard at all. At Bollinger, we are very proud because we have a vineyard of 180 hectares that account for 50, about 50% of our needs. So when you take a bottle of, on Bollinger, of Bollinger, the majority of the grapes are coming for, from our own vineyard, and that's that's very uh, that's something different and from the others, from a lot of different other houses in Champagne. The second thing very important about Bollinger is from where we are coming. We are coming from a small village called AI, A-Y in English. And this village is located right in the middle of the Pinot Noir region. So that's why since the beginning, we are focusing on the Pinot Noir style of grape. So in all the champagne that we are producing, you will always, always find a majority of Pinot Noir, even above 60% of Pinot Noir in all, all the blends that we are making, up to 100% Pinot Noir. So between 60 to 100% Pinot Noir, we will never produce a blanc de blanc champagne. That's not our philosophy. Our philosophy is to be Pinot Noir driven. So that's the second thing. First thing, the vineyard. Second thing, the Pinot Noir. The third thing, very important to keep in mind, is about the non-vintages that we are producing. You know, today, more than 80% of the production of champagne is made with non-vintages. At Bollinger, we are producing, of course, non-vintages, special cuvée and Bollinger rosé. And part of the blends is coming from reserve wine that we are aging in magnums. And we are the only one in Champagne to age our reserve wine in magnums. And that will give a lot of complexity to the wines. And that's why we are doing so since, uh, since almost ever. The fourth thing, very important as well, and that's more on the vintage side, is the fact that we are still using oak barrel fermentation. Nowadays, I would say that 99% of the champagne are fermented for the first fermentation, the alcoholic fermentation in stainless steel vats. At Boulanger, we keep on doing oak barrel fermentation in order to give a kind of micro-oxygenation to the wine, and we do so for all the vintages that we are producing, La Grande Année, La Grande Année Rosé, Boulanger, Hardy, Vieille Vine Française. So we are doing so because thanks to this micro-oxygenation, the wine will have the complexity and the longer aging capacity as well. And last but not least, the, the fifth point will be the time. Timing is very important for us. You know, in Champagne, there are two rules. The first rule is that you need to age for a minimum of 15 months, the non-vintages, and vi vintages has to be aged in the cellar for minimum three years. At Boulanger, we're gonna age our wine at least twice what the appellation is requiring. So for instance, the non-vintages will age for a minimum of three years, when the vintages will age for a minimum of, minimum of six, seven years. It will be even more for RD. RD is above, ab uh, above 10 years. So this, long, this is a very long aging strategy that we have. So remember, first the vineyard, second thing, the Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir driven uh, company. The third thing, the reserve wine in Magnums that we are still using. Fourth thing, the oak barrel fermentation for all, all the vintages. And last but not least, time which is part of our philosophy. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. So You're which is the, your highest uh, range uh, of uh, Bollinger bottle? Is it the RD or Hello. something? Uh, Bollinger RD is uh, a wine that has been uh, invented in 1967 by our uh, president at that time. Uh, her name was Elizabeth Bollinger and she wanted to do something completely different from what the market was proposing at that time. The market was dominated by non-vintages at that time and with a very high percentage of sugar. She decided to do something completely different, having launching on the market a very old vintage with a very low level of sugar. So extra brut, old vintage. So the first vintage was 1952. It's not over and today we are still having this, um, this cuvee and we are producing this cuvee uh, when the year is uh, as fantastic aging potential. So for instance, right now we are on the vintage 2004. The previous one was the vintage 2002, Bollinger RD 2002. 
but it's not today uh, our most, I would say, most expensive UV, if it's your question. In terms of posi positioning, the most expensive QV that we have in our portfolio, it's called Vieille Vigne Française. It's a QV uh, that is made from a pre phylloxera vineyard, you know, this little bud that attacked France and the, the entire European vineyard at the end of the 19th century. It destroyed everything, everything, all the vineyard. And the only uh, solution at that time that we found in order to fight against this bud was to, uh, to graft the vine on American roots. At Boulanger, we still have two plots that have never been attacked by phylloxera. And so we are still using these two plots, very small plots, only 0.36 hectares. And we are still using these two plots in order to produce a wine called Vieille Vigne Française, all the French vines, because it's vines that have never been attacked by phylloxera. And, uh, and this wine will cost, I would say, about three times what Bollinger RD is costing. Yeah. Are this, is this wine available in any of the Asian markets? The production is very, very small. Depending on the vintages, it will be between 1,500 up to 2,300 bottles. So the production is very tiny, but we try to spread, to spread up this, uh, the diffusion to all the markets. So depending on the size of the market, there will be between 1 to uh, 12 or 20 bottles available on the market per year. But it's a very, very small production. I understand. I understand. Well, thank you very much. You're most welcome. Be here, and uh, I hope to see you around uh, in Asia somewhere. Thank you very much, Salvatore. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.